Hello everyone, welcome back to Uminiko. The last time we left off, we learned about Hempel's Raven, Beatrice's past, as well as Rosa's shared past with her. And anyway, without further ado, let's just get right into today's episode. In his dimly lit study, which was occasionally brightened by lightning, Inzo kept mumbling to himself, laughing to himself. Man, he's crazy. For a moment, I thought his eyes were gonna just open, <laughs> you know, like classic. I don't know, manic energy. On the antique clock with an intricate design that was sitting on his desk, the two overlapping hands had begun to tilt to the right and separate from one another. The passage of time that had counted to 24 had returned to zero and begun to start counting again. <laughs> ゼロに戻る。23時59分までは確かに数えただろう。しかし、24時にたどり着くことはできたのだろうか。たどり着けず、再び0時に戻ったと考えれば、それは何とも虚しいことよ。no, that is that not the same as a person's life? You live aiming for a perfect 24, and in the instant you reach it, you return to zero. People may praise the departed, saying that they did reach 24. That is absolutely not 24. It is nothing more than zero. <laughs> I'm trying to piece together what exactly he means by 24 and that he says people depart at zero but I guess 24 is like the life that transcends death? Inzo had been fumbling around with some tarot cards for some time it looked as though he was trying to divine his own luck, his own propensity for victory, and doing it over every time he didn't like the result. I don't think that's how tarot cards work, Kinzo. The most forbidden action in tarot reading is to try predicting the same thing twice. That's what I thought. It is a desecration to the result of the fortune telling, and also desecrates the existence higher than humans, which delivers signs through tarot cards. However, Hinzo knew. The reason the tarot cards shouldn't be used twice was that, since it was nothing more than a random number generator, it was natural that if you read them twice, a different result would appear. Therefore, reading twice was only forbidden to preserve the mystic of the tarot cards' results. However, that didn't mean that Kinzo didn't take tarot reading seriously. Inzo's interpretation of tarot reading was done in a completely different way. That was to repeat the reading over and over until he reached the results most favorable to him, without the slightest amount of compromise. It would depend on how he defined the result most favorable to him. But if he demanded the best result in a strict sense, it would be the same as a simple roulette of luck, where he sought an arithmetic miracle However, to Kinzo, who made miracles of numbers the basis of his magical power, this result would become very much like a magic ritual. Okay, wait, I do remember something about numbers and Kinzo, or am I reaching here? But I do recall something about numbers. In other words, until the result he desired appeared perfectly, he would repeat the tarot readings over and over, turning his labor, conviction, and the feelings of his heart into a prayer. 
so that when it reached heaven, the result would be sublimated. This was Kinzo's personal magical interpretation. Therefore, even though tarot cards Kinzo used were exactly the same as generally used tarot cards, the way they were used was completely different. <laughs> Kinzo stopped his hands for a second. It seemed the result he expected wasn't showing up. On the contrary, many bad cards that shouldn't often appear were appearing repeatedly and continuing to interfere with the miracle Kinzo wished for. <laughs> he still didn't explain how he reads the tarot cards. <laughs> it seemed that Kinzo had taken some kind of sign from this abnormal course of events. But judging by the unlucky cards scattered over the desk, it was difficult to imagine that the sign had been a good one. For a while, Kinzo closed his eyes tightly, pondering something. Then, as the thunder roared, he made up his mind about something, took the telephone receiver, and dialed. <laughs> Urgent. Wonder what it is. In front of the main entrance, Shannon was cooling her flushed face in a frigid air. I suppose this is after, um, George's proposal? She had thought that George's proposal would surely come sometime. I... yes. It wasn't as if her heart had been unprepared, and she had nodded as an answer. Had she been reckless because of her youth? Should she have thought about her future more seriously? She found herself worrying that he might have thought of her as a cheap girl because of her immediate reply. Perhaps at least holding off until tomorrow morning would have given the impression of thinking more seriously? Now that she had already received the ring from George, Shannon kept fidgeting in embarrassment, thinking she should have done this, should have done that. As she did, she heard the sound of footsteps coming towards her, splashing through puddles. Shannon immediately chased away the emotions welling up inside her. I am scared. Oh, Genji. She grew stiff, thinking that she would surely be scolded for spending too much time in a secret lover's meeting with George. So all of his furniture gathering in one place. Why? 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 Why don't you want Goda to know this? Kenan was especially good at hiding his presence. Like he was a cat. He was able to suddenly be there without anyone noticing and leave in the same way. So even if he were to step in a puddle, the sound he would make would be far smaller than that of the rain hitting the puddles. Genji also had that ability. Well, in the first place, that was how the servants were supposed to be even going by the name of furniture. So both Genji and Kenan are proven to be good at hiding. and. That might prove useful. Just like how desks and closets go unnoticed by members of the family, the servants also treated being able to show up unobtrusively when they needed to as their greatest virtue. In that sense, Shen's footsteps still strongly asserted themselves. She was also trying to hide her footsteps, but compared to Kenan and Genji, well, you could say she was a little more lively. I wonder if 
there's anything special about Shannon that would make her different from Hanan and Genji, considering she's also the one that proclaims herself to be human. I wonder if there's anything that could have led to that. I mean, I know Kinzo supposedly created them as furniture, but still, if there's anything else. Eventually, they reached the back door, and the three of them entered the mansion. Immediately, they thought they felt something. It wasn't quite a sense of smell, rather they felt it from the depths of their noses. And this hard-to-describe sensation, which you might call a sixth sense, allowed them to perceive that something was different than usual. Genji-sama. That perception caused them to feel that something tense was closing in on them. Realizing that, the three of them dashed up the stairs aiming for Kinzo's study, still hiding their footsteps. When they dashed up the stairs, that smell of sweet poison particular to Kinzo's study reached their noses. Hmm? Oh my god, <laughs> this is so, I don't know, thrilling? The barrier is dead. It was broken? <gasps> After hearing Canon, she looked at the door to the study. A scorpion pattern was engraved on the doorknob. A powerful magic repellent. The final barrier which protected Kinzo himself. It had been broken. Of course, there was no change to the doorknob that the eye could see. However, they who could understand things that people couldn't perceive were able to recognize that dramatic change. What if Kinzo is dead? It is 12. Genji de gozaimasu. Genji called in this way after knocking several times, but there was no answer from the study. Protect, protect your backs from, from? Oh my goodness. I think something's happening. And then put his ear against the door, searching for a presence inside the study. To protect the backs of the other two who were watching the door, Shannon faced the other way with her back to them, prepared for the unexpected. Oh my goodness, we're already starting? Genji pulled a gold key out of his pocket. It was the only key to the study that existed, other than the one Kinzo held. He stuck it in a keyhole and turned it heavily. At a glance, that would have indicated that it was a really strong lock. However, the fact that the barrier had been destroyed meant that this door had been long been wide open for anyone with magical power. The lock made a heavy sound, indicating that the door had been opened to humans as well. Man... As Genji respectfully bowed his head, and Kenan's sense of tension grew tighter, and Shannon acted nervous, they entered the study. Oh, well, he looks alive. They immediately discovered Kinzo's figure. He was sitting in a reception sofa so that his back faced them. Genji noticed the person sitting across from him and again bowed deeply. Kenan also noticed that person, and he didn't bow his head. Wait, 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 that person. I guess it's Beatrice, maybe? 
He went in front of Shannon, spread both her, both his arms, blocking the way to her. So without even seeing that person's face, Shannon already had a good idea who it was. I knew it. Which person? Oh. Genji directed his greeting towards the thin darkness behind and to the right of Beatrice where nothing appeared to be. Even Canon and Shannon couldn't have imagined that someone would be there. However, the darkness answered immediately and praised Genji's eyesight. ええ、<笑> Oh, so Canon doesn't know, but Shannon knows? Canon君とは会うのは初めてになりますね。私はメアトリーチェ様の家具頭を任されておりますロノウェと申します。現時さんの古い馴染みですよ。あなたと同じに私も家具です。使える主は異なりますが。the color of tension didn't disappear from Kenan's expression in the slightest. Serving under a different master, furniture could become kind, brutal, or anything else as desired. If he called himself furniture serving the hated Beatrice, then surely he was a despicable being as well. Well... <laughs> I was gonna say that Kenan serves Kinzo, who is also despicable, in his own right. Beatrice openly sneered at Cannon's hate-filled face. Then, Cannon finally observed. Beatrice and Kinzo were enjoying a chess game, sitting in facing reception sofas. But Kinzo hadn't even quivered. He was holding his head with both hands, his eyes closed tight as he contemplated his next move. No, was he in anguish? Oyakata-sama, <laughs> Oh, so I guess I was wrong. I thought that the dining room would be the first place, so like the adult siblings would die first, but I guess Kinzo will die first? Hahahaha <laughs> うそつけ。もうて遊んで殺しているくせに。よして、カノン君。さて、金蔵。そろそろ負けを認める気になったのか。これにて、わらわとの長きにわたる勝負は決着だな。<笑><笑> At a glance, you couldn't tell the current situation on that chaotic chessboard. However, judging by Kinzo's anguish and Beatrice's malicious relaxedness, it looked as though it was already decided.
I wonder if they really are talking about a chessboard, though. Beatrice advanced her queen and made her final move. It was thus decided. <laughs> Inzo suddenly stood up and laughed, like an opera singer facing a full crowd and spreading his arms, as though he had succeeded in a century-long plan. Oh? Oh? Oh! Oh, what? Oh, that is so... Oh, scary! That laugh spat crimson. Crimson flames poured out from inside him, spitting even out of his mouth, ears, and nose, and all at once his body was wrapped in hellfire. You know what this reminds me of? In the very first um, episode, he died in the incinerator, right? Or well, his body was discovered in the incinerator and he was badly burnt. I wonder if he went out in the same way as well, but someone placed him in the incinerator. Or, well, anything. It could be anything. But Kinzo kept laughing. The more he laughed, the more the hellfire spewed from his entire body and began to char him. Those flames became a brilliant light, which dazzlingly shone on the various magic tools throughout the room and made their distorted shadows dance across the walls. Those shadows looked like the dead in hell, in ecstasy over Kinzo as he burned. And, for the one who had made a contract with the witch, and who had reached the end of that contract, it was an extremely fitting end. After laughing and howling in the roaring flames for some time, Kinzo flopped to the ground, as though he was a puppet whose strings had been cut. Those incredible blazing flames disappeared, as though they had burned up everything there was to burn. And afterwards, all that was left was a festering and burnt body that would make you want to avert your eyes. What about the other five people to be sacrificed? <laughs> <laughs> and why did Kinzo call the furniture in? Yoshikanonka, <laughs> Beatrice smiled broadly, or perhaps wickedly. Kanon violently averted his gaze, obviously disturbed. His reaction was so different from what he had obviously intended that it made the witch and her butler laugh. Kanon, Beatrice is the one who 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 is Skinny,言わせてやれ。わらわは寛大である。何が寛大だ。わらわは死にゆく者にはいつだって寛大である。the first twilight required six sacrifices. So who would be the other two more outside of the three furniture? Inzo alone wasn't nearly enough. And they had just nonchalantly come to this place. <laughs> I see. What? Oh my goodness. 
He tricked me. I thought I I thought I was wrong. She tricked me. They instinctively figured it out immediately. Six sacrifices were required for the first twilight. After Kinzo, how many more would you need to add up to six? In this mansion, the number five instantly made them think of the number of servants here. それが、お望みですか。うん。感謝せよ、カグドモ。そなたたちの苦難の日々はこよいようやく終わりを迎えた。それを告げに訪れた我らに感謝せよ。かしこまりました。それをお望みでした。ゲ、ケンジ様。
Compared to the two who had attained a philosophical state of mind, there was a painful anguish on Kenan's face. Kenan was still far too young to accept his demise without regrets. After being told off it by a suddenly appearing witch, I'm gonna make things boring for you, Beatrice. Kenan realized that he was being provoked. However, no matter how much anger spurred him on, his opponent was a witch. He was furniture. He had no chance of victory from the beginning. But the witch was expecting that he would struggle in vain and writhe around, and was looking forward to it. Just thinking about that was frustrating enough to get his blood boiling. Was disappointing the witch by refusing to assist, to resist like the other two, the only way he could strike back at her? レンゴクの七姉妹が長女ルシファー、いでよ。ゴーマンのルシファー、ここに。カーノン、家具に魔女と戦えというのも酷な話よ。いつかなゴアウトセイムウェイアゲン。そなたがいくら怒りに駆られ
to be honest, I think it's kind of insane that through the course of playing with the witch, for me, it's like I've slowly become desensitized to the murders that are happening. And for a while, I thought of accepting that condition because why not, right? But then I realized that really what you want is not to accept or to choose the five people to go to the golden land which may not even exist but to save all the people on this island to prevent them from dying in the first place so in other words to disturb her ritual to defeat Beatrice that is the true goal not playing around with her silly whims but it seems that Shannon doesn't defer to the witch, not really. She has certainly become quite detached. Maybe, maybe, actually, maybe she is. She does have um, the same feelings as in episode 2 meaning that she accepts herself as, as a human but she doesn't want to fight back against Beatrice because she knows that that will bring Beatrice more joy than anything else so she wants to resist and this is her way of resisting by becoming detached from the situation Beatrice couldn't hide her evil smile at those words. I don't like this. So what I said was true, that basically everything that happened before the typhoon came, I guess does carry over? Mm, I think so. Since the ocean is blue is only something that she said in episode 2. But now I feel like we have to revisit episode 1. Whether the things that happened in episode 2 were also in episode 1. But I'm kind of seeing a pattern here now. シャノンは下がれ。カノン、ルシファーは前へ。王世のままに。ふふふふふ。気に入らないわ。ベアトリーチ様は無理でも。私にだったら勝てるかもしれないという見下しが最高に気に入らないわ。that was probably humiliating to Lucifer. But at the same time, she was also happy that she was so lucky to have this lovely prey all to herself. Her evil smile. <laughs> Uh, I think Cannon's gonna die though. So? Why does this always look so pretty? Oh! <laughs> I hate this smile, I hate this look so much. It's so scary. Come now, battler. What will you say? <laughs> battler, are you not gonna say anything about Kinzo suddenly combusting? ほら、ほら、目をつむらずにちゃんと見ろよ。ほら、ほら。ほら、ほら。魔法だよ。家具だよ。そなたがどんなに笑わや魔法の存在を否定しようとも。<笑> 
Hora, hora. Hora, 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 hora. I can come up with a explanation for this. Hannon and Lucifer are both holding lightsabers and smashing swinging at each other. That's why it's causing all these um, beautiful light patterns. こうしてほら、ほら、ほら、ほら。もう思考なんて止めちまえよ。魔法はあるんだって。これはファンタジーなんだって。目を閉じるなよ。Okay, thank you Beatrice for that big hint <laughs> The fact that she tells me to stop or well, she tells Battler to stop thinking tells me that he needs to think even harder and not give up So, it is not magic, it is not fantasy it is indeed some lightsaber show I don't know show <laughs> ちくしょう、ちくしょう、ちくしょう。魔法を認めない。でも、こんなにあからさまにやられちまったら、なんだっていや、いいんだ。くそ、くそくそくそ。ほら、目を背けるなよ。しっかり見ろよ。魔法は
煉獄の七姉妹が長女ルシファーを刺して決して勝てないとここんな思い上がりが Will he actually win? Oh my goodness. Oh! Did he win? Oh my god. <laughs> Hannon was desperately trying to stay alive, and he had the strong desire to become human. But Lucifer didn't feel anything stronger than a slight desire to play. So that reached its inevitable result. For the ability to yield such a result is a power of humans. The power of the heart. Hannon does have a heart. A glowing red trail extended straight out from Hannon's arm, pointing at Lucifer's throat, just beneath the tip of her chin. As she ground her teeth in irritation, she tried to deny the reality right before her eyes. But no matter how much she believed in her own superiority, it didn't change the facts right before her eyes. わらわの家具のなんと情けないことか<笑>ルシファーお嬢様を退屈させていますよやはりあなたには荷が勝ちすぎた相手でしたか失望するぞ七食いの長女<笑>She made her body explode, exposing her true form. That form was a demon stick, which bounced and deflected off the walls all over the room. If she is in this state, I feel like she would win. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, man. With a speed exceeding even the limits that the human eye could follow, Lucifer went wild and flew at Kenan's heart. I heard the blood dripping. Lucifer confirmed that the sweet taste she could feel was definitely Kenan's blood. But she quickly noticed she hadn't pierced Kenan's heart. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> So, Canon is both human and furniture? Oh my goodness, now I feel bad for doubting Canon. Cannon, please, please, win. The floor was stained with dripping blood. It really was Cannon's blood, but it wasn't flowing out of his chest. Cannon had sacrificed his own left hand to protect his heart. Oh.
Lucifer was arrogant. Even though she had been given enough time to realize that this was an opponent capable of cornering her, even so, in her pride, she had believed that he was a worthless opponent. She had gotten careless. So just as she had announced, she had aimed for his chest, trying to pierce his heart. Because she was arrogant, she hadn't even thought of aiming for somewhere other than a place she had announced. No, maybe she had thought about it a little. However, her pride would not allow for her to aim for a different spot. Because she was Lucifer, the proud. Hennen was standing a pain, grasped the demon stick sticking deep into his left hand strongly with his right, and pulled it out. Oh, the sound of breaking bones and even more blood dripping down could be heard. Shannon instinctively averted his her eyes. There was an air hole in the back of the pierced hand so big that you could clearly see through the other side. Kenneth's face was filled with agony, but in this very moment, yet won without a doubt. Oh? <laughs> Her crying face. The demon stick he was gripping with his right hand turned back into Lucifer again. Kenneth was now gripping exactly where her neck was. <laughs> Hannon didn't hold back at all with the hand gripping Lucifer's throat. She had challenged him again after their fight had already been decided. Hannon had no obligation to be considerate. Well... But even so, Cannon released the witch's furniture. Was it his naive humanism, his pity for another piece of furniture, or a final show of respect to the witch? In any case, when she was released, Lucifer fell face down on the ground and made as if to vomit, moaning over the pain in her throat. Meaning... A heart, a heart is better than no heart, since Canon is the only one with a heart, right? Well, I have to check that again, but that's what I remember. Renove was clapping his hands. To Canon, who had achieved a difficult victory, incurring a wound on his left hand that couldn't be closed, that applause seemed nothing but shallow. Kanon <laughs> ran up to him and wrapped a handkerchief around his left hand, which was still spraying blood. I didn't expect it at all. My, how wrong I was. <laughs> she really knows how to provoke Cannon. That even in his victory, she is still more victorious. <laughs> みんな押した。正直見直したぞ。いや。約束を忘れてはいないだろうな。でや。もちろん忘れてはおらぬ。魔女も悪魔もひどうではある。だがしかし、契約に限っては人間など及ばぬほどに高潔だ。わらわは保
さすがにやりすぎでは<笑>それもそうであるな More than killing a person? 許してやるか Beatrice spun her pipe again. When she did, the magic that had been affecting Lucifer was released. So, as a horribly natural result, this time with extreme legitimacy, she fell back onto the floor. Man. さてかの続けようではないか何をだまさか彼女に留めをさせとても言うつもりなのかオーマイグッネスああ違う違うまだ終わっちゃいないだろうが何をだはぐらかすないやわはたしかにそなたと約束したぞ Eh? Did she? Did she say that? Wait. Wait, so all of the seven stakes? Man, she really is cruel. With shrill laughing voices, the air split, and gold sprayed everywhere as the remaining six of the seven stakes of purgatory showed themselves. All the seven sisters of purgatory, only one of which Kenan had been able to defeat by sacrificing his left arm, were gathered. By now, Kenan regretted his thoughtlessness in accepting the witch's challenge. He had been foolish to assume that a game with a witch would be on an even footing. に這いつくばってるのお前たちだからお姉様はダメなのよ長女を偉そうに名乗るくせに上っ面だけなのよええまったくルシファーお姉様一人の集会が私たちへの評価を下げるのよ恥を知りなさいなこの未熟者が Hey, they're all so mean to Lucifer. だからルシファネは何もしなくていいといつも言っているお姉様は威張ってだけいればいいあらごとはすべて優秀な私たちで片付けるのだからお姉様どうする私たちはお姉様のプライドを尊重してそのゴロゴロの体で再び挑むのを期待して手出しをしないつもりなんだけれどでもカノン君は強いわよね今のお姉様じゃもうどうあがいても勝ち目はないわよねお前たち<笑> やれやれいつも賑やかな姉妹たちであるな今は仲たがよしている場合かそなたらは七人揃ってこその煉獄の七姉妹であろうが仲良くして藁の仕事を遂行せよ迅速にねねルシファーお姉様私たち妹の力が
見苦しくて情けないこの長女のルシファーをどうか妹の皆様お助けくださいってねえ聞かせてよそれを聞かせてくれたら助けてあげるそれでいいわよねみんなお前たちおのれ The seven sisters of purgatory taunted their elder sister, calling her worthless, verbally abusing her. Even Kenan, who had been fighting her for his life until a second ago, couldn't bear to look straight at it. <laughs> well, if Beatrice is going to play dirty like this, can't Cannon play dirty too? Shannon, step in! Use a barrier! Sora, what did you do, Lucia? You're a man of God. It's hard. Lucifer ground her teeth over and over, her curses at her sisters, and then, as she trembled all over, She answered her sister's request. Oh. She's gonna do it? This must be really painful for Lucifer, who is the stick of what is it, pride? <laughs> She was finally unable to endure saying those degrading words, and the girl bearing the name of Pride broke down crying. However, the six younger sisters kept giggling cold heartedly. Those cruel sisters. ちょっと。泣いてごまかさないで。まだいつってない。もう十分だろう。さあ、姉妹たち。我らの力を見せてやろう。私は全部聞かなきゃ満足しないわよ。Them? Who is them? さて、哀れな家具をどのように遊んでやろうかしら。素敵な提案はある？ ベルゼンは仲良く7人でカノン君を分け子したらいいと思います。良い提案だな。それでなら姉妹でみんな仲良しだ。なら私飛ぶね。手足はあんたらにあげるわ。やだやだ。ダメ。I forgot Leviathan is always crying because of this. 私が頭なの。そんな約束意味があるわけないでしょ早い者勝ちに決まってるわどんな殺され方がいいかカノン君の提案があったら教えてね七姉妹で飛びっきりの殺し方をしてあげるくそここまで恥をかかせたんだもの<笑><笑><
The seven sisters jumped around the room faster than the eye could see, deciding how they would kill Cannon. They tortured Cannon with their cruel giggles, sometimes making a close pass at him. Oh no! They kept scraping his arms, shoulders, and cheeks, carving red lines into his body. At that time, Shannon dashed up behind him, holding on to him so that she blocked the way to his body at least a little. <gasps> thank you, thank you, Shannon! Yay, Shannon! <laughs> I'm so glad to see Shannon here. Shannon came to the rescue. <gasps> At the same time, a red cylinder wrapped around the two of them, like a beam of light sent from heaven. That cylinder repelled the evil ones who tormented Kenan. I think cheating is what Beatrice did. いただき。ベアトリーチ様、シャノンを私たちの獲物にしてもああ、構わんぞ、好きにしろ。お前たちの悪事には、カノン一人では足らなかろうしな。ありがたき幸せ。さあ、シャシャリ出てきたことを後
。ありがとう。魔女から聞ける言葉で、最も嬉しい言葉です。<笑>ならせめて最後にわらわを思いっきり喜ばせる死に方をしてみせろよ七姉妹よ聞こえたなシャノンの殺し方お前たちの残虐の限りを見せてみようシャノン She's so cruel Beatrice 申し訳ございませんやはり私にはゲンジ様の高みには至れませんでした姉さんはバカだ。奥なんか放っておけば、姉さんまでひどい目に遭うことは。うん。いいの。ジョージ様に指輪をもらって、女として生きられた。あなたをかばって、姉として生きられた。私のせいは、すべて、これで未練なく全うした。なあイライラするぜその達観が本当にイラつくぜだから家具なんだよお前からは人間の匂いがしねえんだよわらわを見ろよわらわこそ人間だろうが家具のくせにわらわよりも完成されたかのような達観したかのようなことを言うんじゃねえその未練があなたの正体なの未練じゃねえそれが生きるってもんだ指輪もらったから死んでもいいとかああ理解できねえさっぱりがっかり愕然呆然全然ダメだぜお嬢様少し品がないかと。うるさいわ家具がシャーノン楽に死なせてもらえると思うなよ舌を噛むなら今のうちだ哀れねもしも私の目にあなたのその姿が映ってそのが醜さにおののくといい I can definitely see how Shannon is the kind of person that Beatrice finds hard to deal with because no matter how angry you get at her, no matter how much you provoke Shannon, she won't give in to your provocations. Not the way Kenan did. And in fact, that would probably just make、uh, Beatrice, Beatrice's blood boil even more because of how detached Shannon is. And you know what? I respect Shannon. <laughs> ぐちゃぐちゃに生きながら醜く潰してやるからよ At the time, Genshi softly entered the red barrier. Maybe that barrier didn't block those without ill intent. Then, Genji softly held Shannon from behind and covered her eyes with his right hand. What is he gonna do? Genji sama? She gonna die? Thank you very much, Kenji. After that, Genji softly pressed his left hand around against the area around her collarbone. I wonder, so is Genji gonna take over? And I don't know. In a way, resist against Beatrice? Supposedly, even though he serves her after Kinzo had passed. As he did, from the area where that left hand pressed, a crimson stain gently spread out. When Genji removed his hand, a bright red, fresh blood oozed out of there. For just a very first instant, it appeared to be shaped like a crimson rose. Shannon did? And when he removed the right hand that covered Shannon's eyes, there was a peaceful expression on her face, as though she was sleeping.
and she fell softly, silently down, and slept. Her soul had already been sent to a world where the malicious witch and her furniture could never reach her. No matter how evilly they tortured her. Why am I <laughs> tearing up? Beatrice and the Seven Sisters were shocked by this scene. Only Renove had a mysterious expression along with his smile. Then Genji leaned over Kenan, who was crouching on the floor. I'm good, I'm crying. I just didn't expect Genji to in a way defy the witch but here he is looking out for Kenan and Shannon just as he had done with Shannon after gently covering Kenan's eyes with his hand gently Genji <laughs> gently covered the area around Kenan's collarbone with his other hand and when that was removed with the lightness of a feather, there was a crimson rose shape. But the rose shape quickly turned into the into stain of bright red blood pouring out. What? <laughs> いせよく悪から面白いのだろうが。見事です、源氏。それでこそ核です。ありがとうございます。それではベアトリーチ様、ロノエ様、これを持って私の最後のお務めとし、お糸間をさせていただきます。我らは楽しみを勝手に奪い
After all, there were still two sacrifices left for the first twilight. The seven sisters cavorted as they disappeared. And only 21 minutes passed? Madam Beatrice. Boda was doing the nighttime rounds. There had never been anything on Rokenjima outside the Ushiro Mia family. So checking the doors and windows were all closed had no real purpose. However, ever since Natsuhi had scolded them, saying that this was careless, the nighttime rounds had become part of the servants' daily routine. The reason that Natsuhi had ordered this was the occasional disturbances of the witch. Everyone who visited this island knew about the legend of Beatrice, the Witch of the Forest. This had become established as this island's characteristic ghost story. Because of that, it was only natural that some people would occasionally say that when they thought they were alone in a mansion, they had heard strange sounds or seen the shadow of a person. I really wonder, perhaps, that there really is a person living in the attic or something. However, when that had created a little too big of a disturbance and reached Natsuki's ears, she had made a fuss, thinking that some suspicious person might have been coming in and out. Apparently, it was said that she had roused all of the servants and had them check throughout the mansion. Because all of this uproar over the witch had happened before Goda had come, he had only heard about it from the more senior servants. Those stories like that could be found in any workplace. Even at the hotel Goda had worked at once, and at the restaurant, there was never a shortage of those types of story. So when he heard that the story on this island, he smiled bitterly, thinking, Ah, uh, so they have that kind of thing here after all. He smiled bitterly, but he thought, When in Rome, do as the Romans do, and had not slighted that. Goda went along with it on the outside, but in his heart, he thought it was a childish trick. At first. Oh, at first. <laughs> he could understand if someone doing the rounds on an eerie night like this, while this curtain waving in the breeze from a window, which hadn't been closed, they might be tempted to believe they had seen a ghost. Goda prayed to the portrait, his hands together, as though he was at a Shinto shrine. Oh! At that time, he thought he heard a sound. The kitchen? Was that the sound of something metal falling on the floor? Surely a mouse or a cockroach hadn't come out and knocked over some of the dishes. No, no, how could that be? It was routinely and thoroughly cleaned. Goda thought that in any case, he had better check what that noise had been and entered the kitchen. I'm not looking forward to this. He turned on the kitchen lights. When he did, he heard a strange sound. Clank, 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 clank. To a cook like Goda, that sound seemed like the lid on the pressure cooker or something was shaking. Of course, it couldn't be in use when no one was in the kitchen. If someone had been using the gas, what a dangerous thing to do, just walk away from it. Just in case, Goda decided to inspect the area around the gas range. <laughs> when he did, 
In the corner by the gas range, the pressure cooker really had been placed there just as he thought. But the flame wasn't on. And yet, the lid was clanking. Oh my goodness! Was something fermenting and leaking gas? How could that be? Then, was there a mouse or something inside? How could there be? Ridiculous. In front of people, Goda acted as though he had a bold personality fitting for his build. But he had actually had an unexpectedly timid side to him. He was terrified to find out what might be inside, and he couldn't check it carelessly. You know, in classic, I don't know, murder mystery kind of stories, it could be like a head in there. In his cowardice, he grabbed a nearby wooden pestle, and with a clunk, he tapped it a little strongly against the side of the pressure cooker. When he did, the clanking sound suddenly stopped. Oh? He should have been relieved now that he had stopped. But the fact that he had stopped when he had hit it was even more eerie and made him even more suspicious about what was inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess saying this will lead to his downfall, but he repeated that many times, trying to build up his own confidence. It was quite comical how he looked completely different from what he was saying. He removed the lid of the pressure cooker, and lying exposed there was a sparkling clean silver bottom of the pot. Oh? There is absolutely nothing frightening like he had imagined. So <sighs> But what was it that was causing it to shake? By now, Goda realized that he had been a coward. So while he still had some doubts about what had caused the lid to make that sound, he explained it away abstractly as some quirk of positioning or something and decided not to worry about it too much. But he heard something while he was outside, that's why he came to check on it, so what caused it to be in that position. Then he took the lid he had grabbed and softly set it back down where it had been. It's alright, there won't be a sound. Obviously. As if witches or magic could exist. Clank. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> oh god, it's so scary. Oh my god, it's becoming more? <laughs> run away, run away, Goda. All of the pots and utensils in the kitchen started clanking at once. And it grew stronger, still, until finally, it became so strong that the lid to one of the pots fell off. And from inside that pot, a slender white arm slowly stretched out. Oh, that is scary! The lid fell off another pot, and another hand slowly stretched out. And another... And another... <laughs> when the number of arms grew to seven, a loud shrill laughter split the air. Oh no. (laughs) 
Come on, let's search. There's only one more. That old hag. Where is she? Not the mansion. Maybe the guest house? Hee hee hee. You snooze, you lose, right? You snooze, you lose, right? Come on, search, search. Find her, find her. Don't get noticed by the relatives in the dining hall. Don't get noticed by the kids in the guest house. Search in silence. Kill in silence. After all, it's still just the first twilight. She isn't in the guest house. But she wasn't in the mansion either. Oh, that is suspicious. Hey, hey, I found her. I found her. She's in the rose garden. Why is she standing around there without an umbrella? Oh, that is crazy. She's given herself up. All mine, all mine, all mine. You slow pokes can just sit there and watch. I told you, no, this one's mine. Come on, if we take any longer, we'll be scolded by Beatrice Sama. Let's take care of it all at once. Oh. Hmm? Come on, found her, surround her. Come on, let's get along and do it all at once, okay? Die! Oh, oh, what? Oh, holy shit, what? <laughs> what the heck? Uh -huh. Holy shit, no way! Kumasawa? I'm... I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked right now. What? <laughs> And which child is she talking about? Oh my god. Well, I remember something, which is that the stakes can only pierce the people who have committed those sins. Maybe it could be that, but also, <laughs> is she furniture? Or... what is she? Ah, so I am right. So, so そのような手帳庫私たちがするとは思う I'm getting chills right now. ロノウェイ。久しぶりですね。ええ、本当に久しぶりです。こいつ、ロノウェイ様を呼びつけに。そして、あなたもお久しぶりですね。ベアトリーチ。こいつ。Oh my god, what is happening? I'm getting extreme chills right now. What? I, I'm trying to process everything. I, I. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. わらわはそれを受け継いだにすぎぬ。その方こそはわらわの師匠。Oh my god. I need some time. <laughs> I need some time. What is happening? 仙台ベアトリーチェ兄弟。
先代ベアトリーチェ教Both butterflies appeared in ones and twos from the Garden of Roses and began to gather around Kumasawa. And after becoming a golden radiance and enveloping her, they burst and disappeared, and Kumasawa's form was no longer there. Oh my goodness! I. I. I'm so. I'm. <laughs> I cannot even think right now. This is so unexpected. I'm losing my mind right now. Holy shit. Instead, there was another golden witch, the one who had, in the past, explained to Beatrice the path of an endless witch. The only person Beatrice had called master in her entire life. But. But, but, Kumasawa, what? Her hair was long and beautiful and vividly youthful, and her figure in an elegant dress was unrecognizable as an old lady. No, this looked like a completely different person than Kumasawa. She awoken from her sleep. And I don't know how Kumasawa ties, ties to that though. <laughs> むしろ退屈は私たちの天敵じゃありませんか。それから逃れるための I don't really get it. Negawakuba,二度と起こされぬことを夢見ながら。こうしてあなたと再会してしまったのは、私にとってはとても悲しいことです。相変わらず、お師匠様は食えないな。<笑> ロノエ、家具の子たちを下げなさい。家具は主に仕えるだけです。全ての罪は主が背負います。かしこまりました。マダムベアトリーチェ。おお。その名もその子に譲りました。さ、下がりなさい。家具の娘たち。So what is her name then? 私は一度聞かぬとしても二度言います。しかし、三度目は口にしませんよ。下がりなさい。煉獄の七姉妹。巻き添いになれば、散りとかしますよ。さ、下がれ、みんな。Renove and the seven sisters of Purgatory retreated. After that, there was this Beatrice whose bold expression didn't falter, and the master Beatrice who had given up that name and wore a composed smile. Sante, Osho sama, Kisashiburi no saikai ni wa, donna ocha no goyoi ga yoi kana. So desu ne, 
ほうき星の訪れよりも久しい再会ですもてなしてもらいましょうか粗相があるようならば我が名と無限の魔女の称号返してもらいますよ<笑>無限の魔女にも免許更新制度があったとはな仰せのままにお師匠様あなたの弟子がどれほど立派になったかそしてとっくの昔にどれほどあなたを凌駕したかとくとご覧に入れましょう Beatrice really is arrogant. It looked like sparks exploded in the air between the two Beatrices. Oh, oh, oh. Are they gonna fight? Man. Just by glaring at each other, they purged all spirits from that space. As they watched, the seven sisters shivered. Because if they had retreated just three steps less than they had, they would already have been turned to dust by now. So, please, Beatrice. You used the name of that name as my fault. Oh my god. I... Ugh, I don't know how I feel right now. There's like so many emotions in me and... Well... It's like half good, half bad. That name is... 自らの手で修正しましょう。<笑>そりゃあ違うぜ、王将様。わらわのただ一度の過ちは、この程度の力を学ぶのに、あんたに弟子入りしちまったことだぜ。なんだ、魔法。何が無限の魔女だ。こんなの気づくだけの力じゃねえかよそれをもったいぶって偉そうによお前の出番はとっくに終わってんだよお師匠様よおまいごおまいごおバトラー speaking for all of us seeing this for the first time 一体目の前で何が起こってんだかわいそう Oh, oh, she's here too? 私の弟子が迷惑をかけていますね謝りますあ、あんた何者なんだバトラー、have you not been keeping up with everything? Are you sleeping sometimes? クマサーのばあちゃんだどうしてこんな姉ちゃんに化けるんだつうかあんた誰だよわけがわからねえこれは何の特撮なんだスペシャルエフェクト Just like I said 俺は頭がどうにかなっちまいそうだ私はあの子の魔女の師匠ですかつての名はベアトリッチェあの子が私を継ぐ時にその名を送ったため今は名を持ちませんあんたがすでに言い切っちまってるが俺はあんたの弟子のせいで大いに迷惑しているぜ頼むから責任取って何とかしてくれじゃなくて俺はこんなの信じねえぞ魔女も魔法もあるもんかこんなめちゃくちゃバトル俺は認めねえぞクソったら俺は何を信じりゃいいんだ<笑>あなたらしいとても短気なもてなしですね<笑> I wonder why Beatrice hates her master so much さすがお師匠様この程度じゃバカバカしくてまぶたを開く気にもならないらしい
しまごとぶっ壊す気でなきゃ無理らしいぜ I just had this thought but Beatrice really is like a spoiled child throwing a tantrum さあさあおいでなさい創建の戦闘 Shoulder War Towers? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> oh my god. In response to Beatrice's summons, a terrific earth tremor split the Rose Garden. And on either side of his shoulders, two massive war towers sprouted and stepped into the heavens. They stretched 100 Meru okay, tall, and each one had over 360 ports. They were war towers of the gods' army corps, which had not allowed the heroes of antiquity to invade their precincts, even as they banded together. As Beatrice elegantly floated in the gap between the massive, two headed towers, she looked down on her master, sneering with an absolute superiority. With the two ma massive towers lined up behind her shoulders, the witch looked very small, like a butterfly dancing between large trees. に化ければかわせるとか思うなよ双子島の弾幕密度じゃあんた虫ピンの昆虫標本どころかめった刺しの針刺し人形だぜ The towers more than 720 ports opened and godly soldiers ready their multi-shot ballistas What? Oh my god それであなたの手番は終了ですかそれが遺言かよぶっぱなせーおーボルサシャッツ、ナンバリング、イーズリー、オーバーサウザン、ウォー、アルファイド、アッワンス、ドラーイング、アビューティフォー、ジオン、メトリック、カーディン、アッティーズ、ボーリッシュ、タウン、パフォーン、バイドウォー、ボーストリングスクワー、Probably even deeper than the sound of death swinging his scythe. さあさあおいでなさい。墜落せしとうよ。一なる言語をはぜ、その罪を知らしめよ。Hmm? The sky was stained an incandescent red, and from between the clouds, a blazing, massive tower fell upside down. That massive falling tower and its rubble swallowed the thousands of ballista shots so that not one of them could approach the body of the witch who had summoned it. Yes, none can approach the mysteries of heaven. That was the truth of the fallen tower. I wonder what they mean, the fallen tower. So, Suga Oshio sama! いちいちやることができんや<笑>私の手番は終わりませんよ。Yes, like、さあさあおいでなさい。イバルディの息子たち。我にふさわしき槍を与えたまえ。Oh my god!What? As the massive crimson tower that had fallen made a mighty gold colored explosion, from inside those flames, a spear showed itself of such massive proportions that you had to look up to see all of it, much like a tower. It was too large for even giant's hand. It was a divinely beautiful spear of the gods, so massive that it gave the illusion of that the tower which had fallen had turned into a spear of the same size. A spear of certain victory that no one could escape. Muyou no Futagoto desu. Mizukara Sayu no Tairo Tatsu wa Orokashi. Ippon no Yariyo mo Omae wa Fusege nai. When she snapped her fingers in command, the massive tower like spear shot at Beatrice like a lightning bolt. As the golden witch danced in the gap between the towers like a butterfly, it sliced straight through the air like a flash of lightning, aiming right for the very middle of the absolute center of her heart, 
with the most ultimate and extreme precision. You can really see like the difference between how Beatrice and uh, the master uh, approaches this kind of battle. Like even now, Beatrice is so haughty and arrogant, calling her towers useless. She doesn't value it, but but her master knows knows how to value things. That's what I believe. The shoulder war towers exploded in gold. They became several billion gold butterflies. Those butterflies took a shape of seven massive armored soldiers. Each stretched a full 50 maruts into the sky. And they lined up in front of Beatrice, protecting the master and holding massive shields, which towered like windmills. I'm just wondering, is no one inside the mansion noticing any of this? Oh, whoa, whoa. What? Their massive size was evocative of a mountain range. The witch hiding behind them was like a small moon hiding behind the mountains. What a coward, Beatrice. Come out and face. Face your master. Once in the past, when the massive shields these giants held had been readied by the whole giant's regiment, they had protected King Wilhelm's castle not only from arrows, but from the wind and the rain. And when they had faced upwards and held their shields to the heavens, not a single raindrop had gotten through. ま、神の is that not a god? A golden whirlwind arose at the feet of the giant soldiers. It was a group of countless butterflies. They attached themselves to the massive shields like gold leaf, sparkling like they were a gold mirror. That was the absolute defensive wall that the king of the gods gave to the goddess. The Aegis shield. Oh. Oh my goodness. When the strongest spear meets the strongest shield. When the holy spear, which left a dignified trail behind it like a comet, crashed into the mountain range of that gold shield, there was a terrible, thunderous roar. It was the creaking of the pillars that held up the heavens. The divine spear spun around and around, sent flying to the direction of the sunset. この世の荒言ばかり腕を上げましたね。むしろお師匠様はこういうお遊びが相変わらず苦手なようで、わらわからのお返しだ。the giant soldier battle line, which had fully blocked the divine spear, released their holy gold shields. The shields fell to the earth, making the ground shake. And then another gold whirlwind arose, and the seven gold shields changed their form into seven massive spears of lightning lying on the ground. 
In unison, each of the giants lifted a leg high and firmly stomped on the tips of the handles. What? Oh my god. As the earth shook with a thunderous sound, the seven lightning spears spun beautifully and flew up above the giant soldiers' heads. They covered everywhere in a spray of gold as they began to fall before the giants. Each of the giants squared off. With the force and with the force of their whole body, they kicked and smashed them into pieces. Why? Those broken pieces numbered exactly 30 each and became lightning spears of exactly the same size as the original. Which made 210 for all 7 of them and all of those burst at once, each splitting into 30 thorns so that there were 6,300. They became a thundercloud barrage drawing out a beautiful geometric pattern. And then each of those changed into three bolts of lightning with 18,900 thunderbolts shot at the predecessor, Beatrice. That's kind of an overkill, is it not? Oh my goodness. Certainly, a bundle of almost 20,000 thunderbolts should have reduced the master's body to dust. But there was no impact. Beatrice knew immediately that she had been fooled. At that moment, from the direction the sun was supposed to set, she felt an impossible ray of sunlight. A brilliant ray of light shone on her profile. It was the figure of the master, holding aloft the spear of the gods that had supposedly been repelled a short while ago. She bore a brilliant radiance like the sun on her back and made it shine on the incarnation of darkness. Beatrice, watching from there, was trapped like a mouse in a cage, cornered in a dip and formed by the giant soldier battle line. By now, the predecessor Beatrice had seized a position directly alongside the giant soldier battle line. Her bold expression hadn't faltered once before now, but now it twisted for the first time. And faster than Beatrice could click her tongue, the predecessor Beatrice released the Holy Spear. In midair, it sprung up into the air once more, and changed its form once again. See, you can clearly see the difference in how Beatrice treats the people that should that serves her. By now, it was no longer a spear, but the whirlwind of a massive hammer that raised a sound like a windstorm as it flew through the air. It was a legendary hammer that had shaken the king of the frost giants, so the giant soldiers couldn't escape from that fear. So no matter how much their master ordered them, they couldn't block the path of the hammer. Oh... <laughs> Before the whirlwind of this massive chunk of metal, Beatrice was nothing more than a mere speck. The instant the whirlwind started to suck Beatrice in, Beatrice's form turned into a massive war tower. The iron hammer smashed the war tower, scattered tremendous amounts of rubble, but it did not reach she who had escaped behind it. Furthermore, when the smoke started to settle, the war tower had sucked in a massive iron hammer without crumbling and blocked the way. 
Even a giant smashing iron hammer couldn't break through the final tower protecting the witch. However, this war tower was in fact the witch's last trump card. It was a war tower for dodging that could only save her from danger once. But this tower was impregnable. No weapon could break through it. Just then, the moon disappeared. As Beatrice hid in the shadows of the giant soldier, Betteline in the war tower, she looked up at the sky. Oh, what? Oh my goodness. When she did, inside the moon was the figure of a massive horse ridden by the god of war and death. The predecessor Beatrice rode the horse with him. His cloak had blocked the moon and swallowed it in an eerie shadow. And the Spear of Gods was in his hand once more. It was, in other words, a godly knight who had jumped over the ramparts formed by the giant soldiers and the war tower attacking from the heavens. What? What was that? What did that say? The struggle to death between the two witches was the same with the same name was resolved. What? What? Huh? The spear that had been launched from the heavens pierced the ground. The giant soldier battle line and the war tower split up into countless gold butterflies, shrouding the area in a golden storm. Then, the sound of thunder. And the sound of falling rain and wind. Suddenly, the place was the empty rose garden once more. The butler and the rest were watching the two witches confronting each other. But only Beatrice was different. She had been pierced straight through by the spear, from the base of her neck and her right shoulder to her left buttock, unable to even reach the ground with her feet. Horribly exposed like a pitiful pinned butterfly, tormented by the wind and rain. Be Beatrice mm. Beatrice. <laughs> oh my god. Beatrice wore a bitter smile of false courage, but a strand of blood dangled from her mouth, making her look even more pitiful. <laughs> I definitely don't disagree with that. She really is a child. Original form? Oh my goodness. The predecessor Beatrice began to recite the words of power. When she did, small gold butterflies gathered around the skewered Beatrice and began to swarm about her. What is her true form? Like butterflies sucking the nectar out of flowers, it began to suck the magical power out of Beatrice, and it seemed that it caused her intense pain. A cry of agony escaped from Beatrice's mouth. She no longer had any power to resist it. 
思い出してごらんなさいあなたがどんな姿をしていたのかさあベアトリーチあなたも私と一緒に復唱なさい一緒にお歌を歌いましょうそうすればすぐに終わりますよあなたの苦痛が少しでも早く終わりますハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ I'm kind of getting a bad feeling though. Like Beatrice still has a trick up her sleeve. When the two of them began to recite the same chant, more and more gold butterflies dance around, swarming around Beatrice. あなたは私の弟子であることを失いますが私の仕えるお嬢様であることに変わりはありませんそうしたらまた一緒にご本を読んで差し上げましょうリンゴのパイを焼いて差し上げましょう昔のようにさあさあ思い出してごらんなさい<笑>思い出してごらんなさいそろそろ思い出せてきたかな Oh, I really don't have a good feeling なあ、おっしょうさまあんたの後ろにあるそれ思い出したかなあ？なんですかこれは What is it? When the predecessor Beatrice looked behind her, there was a creepy hedgehog crouching there. Hedgehog? No. It was herself. What? There was another predecessor Beatrice whose whole body was packed with ballista shots, lying there like a pincushion doll. <laughs> あなたがどんな姿をしていたのか違うかさあさあ思い出してごらんなさいあなたがどうやって殺されたのか So she was already killed? <laughs> The predecessor Beatrice was shocked Instantly her form began to grow faint Oh, oh my goodness. これはいつの間に最初に呼んだのは創建の塔ではない四つ子の塔だったのよお師匠様の左右はるかに潜んだ隠し塔が描くセブンスランクルークの死の境界線をお師匠様はのこのこと踏み越えてきてくれたチェックの発生が遅れてしまったことだけはマナー違反率直に謝ろうぞ<笑> The battle had been decided at the very beginning It had been over since the time the predecessor had leaned forward readying her holy spear to attack Beatrice who had been wedged between her shoulder towers The hidden towers lurking on either side had bathed her in a windstorm of ballista shots from 720 ports on both sides, hitting and killing her. However, Beatrice hadn't wanted it to be resolved with that. She had wanted to make her master take her next move and had continued acting as though the game was still on. She had immediately revived her with the endless power and had made her continue the game as though nothing had happened. Then the predecessor slowly remembered that she had already been killed and began to completely erase her form. Oh man, I knew something like this would happen when Beatrice suddenly 
deeply started to laugh along and say those words. When she did, the spirit which had appeared Beatrice also erased itself. Beatrice finally fell and landed on her feet. There wasn't even a trace of scar. What does it mean that Beatrice killed her master? And that that's why she can revive her at any time? I don't I don't get it. No? Man, she really did grow up to be so twisted. <laughs> I'll be honest guys, I think what little pity I had for Beatrice in the last episode was slowly, slowly washed away by her arrogance and I don't know, like plain defiance. Beatrice right now is really pissing me off. ロックシュ。でございますか。愚か、心象だ。四つ言で騙せてなかったら死んでおったのは我らの方よ。さすがは王将様。だが、これで胸が張れるというもの。我らは今こそ王将様を完全に超えたとな。ロノベ、お師匠様の亡きがらをもう少し増しにしておけ。わらわもそこまで敬意を失ってはおらぬでな。かしこまりました。今宵の第一の晩は少々派手に暴れすぎました。少しは片付けも必要でしょう。すぐ
少しわらわの責任ではないぞ何しろバトラにキューッと両目を固く閉じてキリキリギリギリ歯ぎしりするなんとも悔しそうなその表情を見せられると自然とわらわの口からこぼれてしまうものでな<笑>さあバトラ様くじけずにテーブルへお戻りをお嬢様はバトラ様の反撃を期待されておりますよふざけるな何をどう反論すりゃいいってんだまずあの塔が地面から生えてきたあたりからもうめちゃくちゃだろうが実は六軒島の地下に合体変形巨大ロボの秘密研究所でもあってボタン一つでおかしな塔が生えてくるってのかシークレットラブトリーああそれならあのでけえ巨人どもはきっとロボットだぜ<笑>ロボットあるいは悪の秘密結社のメカ怪獣かもな This, this turning into like a mecha enemy right now. わけわかんねえよ俺に話しかけるんじゃねえほらほらほらほら泣くなよ魔法でドッカンドッカンそなたが望むなら月だって砕くし彗星を雨のようにだって降らすさ。お前好みのムチムチ姉ちゃんで島を埋め尽くしてやってもいいんだぜ<笑>さあさあほらほらほらわらわの手番は終わったぜ受け手をさせよ反撃しろよできねえだろできねえのは船長も承知よお前こういうのダメだもんなこういうファンタジー本当は大好きなんだもんな知ってんだよ今時こんなの巷にいくらでも溢れてるじゃねえか漫画に小説アニメに映画10代くらいのガキンチョたちがおかしな特殊能力いっぱい持ってて世界の命運かけてドッカンバッカンやるやつお前も大好きだもんな知ってんだよ隠すなよ大好きじゃねえかよ<笑>そのお前の大好きなやつがちょいと目の前で披露されただけじゃねえかよどうして漫画やアニメのそれは信じてくれるのにわらわのだけ信じてくれねえんだよ I don't like that. <laughs> When she speaks like that, what do you call it? Like, um, oh god, I'm pretty sure there's like a word for it in Japanese. But it's like, egyo in Korean. I will still argue against it. I still will. Believe me, Beatrice, I'm not gonna back down from you. <laughs> I'm so pissed off at Beatrice right now. <laughs> Finally, putting me, putting an end to my misery. I guess we will discover the bodies now. Vigilia? 6 a.m. I. I am gonna end here for today. I am so pissed off at Beatrice. <laughs> I, have, I have so much anger towards Beatrice right now. And like, I don't even know much of her master, the predecessor. But I can tell you that at the very least, she seems to come from a better place and seems to want to look out for Beatrice, but also recognizes that she has. Kind of picked the wrong disciple, I guess. And now Beatrice is, 
you know, such a horrible person playing cruel games with people. There is that. I mean, before that, there's a lot of things you can say this episode, but I think I really need to kind of process everything and just think about it a bit more. I mean, there was a cool fight with, with in the beginning with Kenan, Shannon, Genji, all of them showing such awesome sides of themselves. And even Renove was kind of, I don't know, even a little sympathetic towards like Genji. He didn't let Genji get killed in a cruel way. Instead, you know, all three furniture went out in a rather peaceful sleep. So that was great. And then, well, Kinzo combusted. He, he, he was set on fire. I don't know how. Is he even human? Who knows? But, but yeah, that was that. And then the big, big, big thing that happened was Kumasawa turning into Beatrice? What was that about? What, what, what was happening with Kumasawa? I don't get it. Was she lying dormant in Kumasawa's body or something? Did, did Kinzo do something to Kumasawa? Oh my goodness. Everything is just so confusing and <laughs> i really i do think it will be explained but i don't think it will be explained um for the remainder of episode three at least so we will have to just think about what is happening and and speculate until we come to the end of episode three but anyway i think this was a very 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 fun no i won't say it's fun it was a thrilling episode, but it was a very, 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 very uh, heartbreaking episode for me at the end. Even though I don't know much about the predecessor, Beatrice, she seems like she has a good heart. And Beatrice, our Beatrice, is so cruel, arrogant, immature, and just like a little child stomping her feet when things don't go her way. And that's what I hate the most about Beatrice right now. I wonder if she will change as the story progresses. I I hope so. I'm a little doubtful. I hope so though. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit. <laughs> she makes me wanna scream at her. I I was very pissed off. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.